right let's um, let's pray and then we'll start okay let's uh, let's pray father we thank you thank you for this day lord thank you for this uh, for the time of worship that we had this morning thank you for speaking to us lord thank you for drawing us lord to yourself lord through your presence through your word through your love lord we just want to honor you this morning we just want to give you praise yes father god we want to say that we love you father god and uh, and lord i pray that our obedience god will reflect that uh, that we will demonstrate oh god in our lives lord through our actions oh father god uh, what we sing and say with our words father god uh, i pray that uh, we will will show that uh, through our lives master that uh, through our obedience through our character lord through the way we live our lives father god that we will show um, lord uh, that that our lives itself lord will be an act of worship will be a demonstration of worship father god uh, enable us to live that way um, each and every day god yes master we thank you we give you all the praise and all the glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen right okay so let's start um 1 corinthians and i hope you're able to go back and uh, you know uh, read through the notes it will be it'll be good if you can do that every time um, you know we finish the class just to go through the notes <clears throat> and to see um, you know what we uh, studied in class and it will be a uh, it'll just come back you know whatever we learned to whatever we studied will just come back to us and and uh, you can also just want to encourage you to also make notes you know what the lord is speaking to you even as uh, Uh, as we go through right um like we we go through certain scriptures um certain scriptures as in you know as we study corinthians i'm sure the lord will reveal certain things and um, speak to you specifically you know about uh, um, certain areas of your life maybe about ministry and maybe it's something new that you're learning that you can apply you know in your own lives uh, apply in church apply in ministry and so on so uh, make a note of that right and uh, so that you don't forget that okay so uh, last class we started with uh, uh, we looked at uh, corinthians we looked at the geographical background of how the city was established and uh, uh, we also looked at um, uh, what kind of city it was right we saw that it is a it was a it was a uh, uh, economically commercially it was a very very vibrant city and spiritually also it was you know uh, we see that it was a, it was a hungry city spiritually you know, the people were hungry spiritually and uh, uh, therefore they were going after these kind of uh, you know deities they had apollos aphrodite and um, they also um, they were involved in a lot of things right um, especially uh, if you see they had this temple and uh, we saw that uh, you know all kinds of things were going on in this temple like uh, and and the historians uh, say that they were also like uh, you know temple prostitutes and you know the, and the worship was um, you know uh, it was like that so you can imagine the kind of values which were there so socially uh, value wise um, morally they were very uh, uh, very corrupt and um, so that's the kind of uh, setting into which paul went right so so uh, so where did paul write uh, 1 corinthians from any idea anyone can anyone is here sorry from yeah prince ephesus? from ephesus yeah. yeah so so paul wrote this uh, epistle uh, to the corinthians while he was in ephesus okay so in which of his missionary journey did uh, paul go to corinthians like he he uh, he had some two or three missionary journeys right three so in which of his missionary journeys did paul go to corinthians uh, to go to corinth and establish the church at corinth anyone you can either put it in the chat or you can tell me so which missionary journey of paul uh in which missionary journey was you know did he visit corinth did he establish a church in corinth anyone 
was it his first missionary journey was it his second was it his third okay. third okay prince uh, it, it was actually the second right so second missionary journey uh, so first missionary journey paul goes with uh, silas uh, with barnabas sorry and then they come back to antioch and then paul tells barnabas and we read that in acts chapter um, i think 15 uh, um, yeah true. acts chapter 15 right um, so there paul says you know he tells barnabas let us go back to some of the places that we went and ministered and let's go encourage them and let's just see, see what is happening and uh, then they had that uh, they, they had that argument that discussion uh, about John Mark and then they go their separate ways um, Barnabas uh, takes John Mark and goes and Paul takes Silas and uh, they go okay. okay and in the second missionary journey uh, they go to several places starting from antioch they go to uh you know we, they go to philippi they go to thessalonica they go to beria they go to athens and then finally on to corinth okay so that's what we see okay another question um so who else did uh, paul meet on this second missionary journey who became a part of his team another person who was part of uh, Paul's team, a young man, who is who also, you know, to whom also Paul wrote epistles. Uh, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we read with that uh, Paul went to Derby, Lystra, okay, and uh, this is in Acts chapter 16. Okay, they, he came to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, right? the son of uh, a certain Jewish woman who believed, and his father was Greek. So Timothy, uh, you know, Paul uh, uh, takes Timothy also, so gets him circumcised and so on. And then uh, Timothy also travels with them. So Timothy joins them okay, from, from this place called Derby. And uh, he's well known in Lystra and Iconium and other places. Like people have a good... Um, opinion about him. Uh, he has a good testimony with them, and then uh, and that that also you know uh, he comes to know, and then they do that. He he travels on. Okay, so uh, so he comes to Corinth. So how many how how long did Paul uh, stay in Corinth and minister in Corinth when he established this? How long? Was it a month? Was it six months? Was it a year? How long did he? Okay, two years. Okay, um, so we know that he was there for about one and a half years. Okay, so that's what we see. Uh, let's look at uh, Acts chapter 18. Okay, Acts chapter 18. And verse 11. So Acts chapter 18, uh, the whole chapter is actually, uh, you know, after his, his him reaching Corinth, right? So Acts chapter 18 and verse 11, we see, and he continued there a year and six months, uh, teaching the word of God among them. Okay, so continued there, referring to Corinth. So he was there uh, for a year and at least a year and six months. Um, and then he, because the, the verses after that, it says, uh, Verse 18, so Paul remained a good while, um, still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria uh, and so on. So maybe uh, maybe a little more than uh, a year and six months. So, But we know for sure that he was there for a year and six months, so 18 months, right? So, okay, one last question. So uh, who uh, brought news? about the church in Corinth, from whom did Paul receive this uh, news about what was happening in Corinth and because of which he writes this letter? Okay. 
Okay. Anyone? Um, so he gets to gets some information about Gordon that things are not okay, right? Uh, both good and bad. Things are not okay. Uh, and then so he chooses to uh, write this epistle in order to set certain things right. So from whom did he receive that information? Um, God himself reveals, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm sure that would have happened also, but we see uh, we see a specific name mentioned there. Okay, I look at uh, Corinthians first. Uh, first Corinthians. Let's look at um, um, verse eleven, chapter one, verse eleven. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 11, for uh, it was 10 onwards, let's read. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Verse 11, for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. So, um, okay, Kanan, you're saying Sostenes. So, um, this is, um, see, Sostenes is actually with uh, Paul as he writes this letter. You know, verse 1, uh, Paul called to be an apostle through the will of God and Sostenes, our brother. So, Sostenes actually is with him in Ephesus. Right? Um, he, uh, obviously, he meant, uh, he, this is the same person. Whom he met at Corinth, because uh, in Corinth, uh, in, in Acts chapter 18, uh, Sosthenes is mentioned there right, as a ruler of the synagogue. Anyway, uh, so we see here that uh, Chloe's household. So uh, Chloe was a believer, and uh, the, the household of Chloe, uh, obviously, they were very involved in the church, right? and they see all these things happening, and they decide to inform uh, uh, or get help from Paul to set these things right okay what should we do to set these things so um so it's chloe and the household this they send this information so this is how he comes to know okay and he begins to write okay uh, let's uh, let's move on to uh, the second chapter and uh, let's see um what uh, what we can learn from the chapter two okay. so chapter one we saw paul's greetings about grace uh, and peace uh, from the Lord. We see that that is a standard greeting. And then uh, he he actually commends them. In the sense, he recognizes uh, the grace of God that is on the believers uh, in heaven. And he also tells them, you know, that you, you are enriched in everything, in all utterance, in all knowledge. And also he, he acknowledges the fact that they are, you know, uh, the spiritual gifts are, uh, are very much there in uh, in, in that church. So he says, you, you come short and no gift, right? Um, and uh, so that's what he says in verse 7. And um, and, and, and then he goes on to the, the problem that they are facing. And the problem is division, right? So some people are saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. And, send, and so Paul addresses that. He's, he, he's saying, you know, uh, was is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Did I baptize you? You know, were you baptized in the name of Paul? Right. So he says all that, and then he talk, talks about, you know, um, the, he talks about the cross. You know, that's the important thing, the message of the cross. And even when I was there, you know, I, I, uh, he said I preach the gospel um, not with wisdom of words, but uh, but I want. I don't want to take that focus off the cross, knowing that you know something happened on the cross, and it was the Lord who died for them on the cross. Okay, so he says, you know, this is the message. This is the gospel. The message of the cross. It is the power of God, right? Uh, so the message of the cross, the uh, cross of Christ. It is the message of power. Verse eighteen. He says, uh, to those who are being saved, it is the 
power of God. This message is the power of God. And uh, we'll also look at Romans chapter 1, where Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God, because gospel, uh, because it is the power of God for salvation. So he's not ashamed of this, and this is the message that he shared to them. And he talks about the power of the cross. He talks about how it seems to be foolishness to the Greeks. And um, it, it, it seems to be, uh, even for the Jews who are seeking after a sign, or for the Greeks who, who, are, who want the wisdom, uh, it seems to be foolishness. But to both, this is what we share. Right? This is what we share. And, uh, uh, and, and he says that the, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And, and the reason he shares all this, and he also say, he looks, he looks at them and then says, you know, look at your own lives, you know, how you were called. It's not based on people's personalities or backgrounds or giftedness or performance, but it, everything is of God. And he called and uh, he did this work that no man should glory in his presence. Okay, so the glory completely goes to him, goes to God and him alone. So no human being can glory in in this, in his presence. Okay, so he, and 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 therefore he's saying, you know, you cannot say, in other words, you cannot you cannot say that I'm of God, I'm of Paul, or I'm of Apollos. There's no point in you saying this because it's about the cross and who died on the cross and uh, and the message of the cross, which is which is the power of God. Okay, let's look at uh, chapter 2 and uh, read through a few verses. Um, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with human sorry we're not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of god okay so what is paul saying paul is saying that you know when i came to you when i visited you and i was there with you i did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of god in the testimony of God is what the gospel message, right? So I did not come with uh, what was actually there, right? In those days, the, the Greek philosophers, they had this way of speaking. They had this way of, um, you know, uh, or, or, or eloquence. And they had this or, or, uh, oratory uh, methods uh, or great orators. They had this dramatic way of speaking and, and communicating, right? So Paul saying, you know, I did not come like that or with what you can call as wisdom right excellence of wisdom uh, i did not come with that i did not come like that verse 2 he's saying i determined you know i decided that you should uh, not receive or know anything uh, except jesus and him crucified so while ministering here so he paul actually chose that they should know about the cross and they should know about the power of the cross and him crucified, right? Uh, we see that um, this is central to the to the ministry or the message uh, of anyone. So we learn from that that you know uh, we cannot go away from this message if we want to be true ministers of the gospel, right? This is central, and this is the one that uh, changes lives, uh, and which which might seem to be illogical or it might seem to be foolishness according to the world, but this is the one which changes or transforms lives. Right? So Paul is saying that I determined, you know, when I came to you, I intentionally chose not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because Paul actually was a very... A uh, uh, very learned man, and for him, it was it would have been easy for him, very easy for him to talk about philosophy, to talk about wisdom, uh, to talk about you know the ways of the world and and all that. Um, so, uh, but then he he chose to do this, and he chose to share this, and 
we also read during uh, uh, you know in several other places about paul's ministry that he reasoned with people right he reasoned with people meaning that he uh, um, he chose to you know present his argument present his you know the facts and the evidence and so on and reason with people what do you think and this is what it is this is what the scripture says um, you know acts chapter 18 uh, uh, he he goes there and then he goes to the synagogue with both and persuade the jews and greeks and uh, uh, from scriptures right so but we see that the everything that he uh, reasoned was Uh, focused on the lord jesus focused on the crucifixion focus on you know the death burial resurrection and what that accomplished what the lord accomplished it was focused on that so um so it's an example for us as well right so paul right uh, verse 3 he says i was with you in weakness fear and in much trembling which means that uh, uh, the people were actually if you read acts chapter 18 we see that uh, there was a lot of persecution there right where we see that uh, they uh, especially from the from the jews there was a lot of persecution let's uh, go to acts chapter uh, 18 okay um acts chapter 18 verse verse 8 uh, we see that many of the corinthians believed and were baptized okay through the ministry they heard the message many of them were baptized and verse 9 now paul spoke so, so lord spoke to paul in the night by vision do not be afraid but speak and do not keep silent for i am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you for i have many people in this city so obviously there was a lot of opposition from the you know from the religious leaders uh, because they saw that many of them were coming to jesus through the ministry of paul and uh, so they were if you read earlier also you know in verse 4 you see that uh, he reasoned in the synagogue verse 6 they opposed him and blasphemed okay, so this kind of opposition was there and uh, so paul paul writes you know when i came to you i was with fear i was with trembling uh, uh, and i was in weakness and and so on right so uh, and the lord strengthened him and he says verse 4 and verse 5 my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom okay, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power the reason okay let's look at that persuasive words persuasive words of human wisdom human wisdom so he's saying it it is not with the human wisdom okay it was not with earthly wisdom that i came and spoke to you Okay. and he says uh, not to those persuasive words persuasive words meaning um, it could be uh, you know manipulative or enticing words that cause a person to to be trapped maybe you know entice that's what it means right to entice to to trap to ensnare so i did not come with those kinds of words okay. now when we when we see uh, when let's say you know somebody wants to sell something you know they might be using certain words you know uh, i'm sure you would have seen people uh, selling things uh, and they will be very very persuasive right very very forceful uh, i i remember you know there was one person i think we were on the street and there was one person selling some books okay so selling some books and he, and uh, he would come he was very very uh, he was just came behind said no, so just listen just give me 2 minutes i just want to tell you something and i knew that it was about those books and i didn't want those books but then he kept saying you know just listen to me and uh, just give me 2 minutes and then he you know he put the book in my hands he said you know just just see it okay so he just wants you to get involved right wants you to examine the book to hold the book open it and see if it is good and in some way if you will be convinced that that is what you want right? a very very persuasive okay uh, and 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 using all those techniques uh you know uh, smiling and so hello how are you and, and so on right so paul used none of that okay in sharing the gospel he used none of that he he, he didn't want to entice them to the gospel he didn't want to manipulate them into obeying christ 
thinking. So that's a lesson for us as ministers of God. And, and I, we might see, you know, look around and see, okay, well, that person is actually using these things and using these tricks, right? Using these um, methods in order to, you know, get people to believe or get people to receive Christ. Now, the Lord does not want any of that, right? No gimmicks, no tricks, no, uh, you know, none of these things. No manipulation, uh, no enticement, right? The so Lord wants nothing of that. So, and Paul employed nothing of that. He says, my speech and my preaching, okay, it was no tricks, none of these things. I didn't want you to, you know, come to the kingdom that way, right? So how was it if it was not with human wisdom, if it, if it was not with words of enticement, then how did he preach? He says, it was in demonstration of the spirit and power. It was in demonstration of the spirit and with power. So he, he preached about the cross. He preached, he, he presented the truth about the gospel. This is what happened. And this um, and th this is what the Lord Jesus did. He took your sin upon the cross and he, uh, you know, took it out of the way so that you could have new life and so on. And the power of the cross is available for you. And it was a demonstration or a display of the power of God. It was in display of the spirit. Okay. which means it could have been display of the gifts of the Spirit, it could have maybe in healing and, and uh, signs and miracles and wonders, and the power of God and changed lives, maybe addictions breaking off, changed lives, uh, lives being changed, addictions, uh, you know, uh, everything being uh, broken and lives being changed. Right? So it was the power of God. It was a demonstration of the Spirit. It was not something manipulative it was not something to trap the people so the thing is this that um, you know it was not about for us to learn right we don't we learn okay how not to do ministry and right? how not to do ministry like our speech need not be to trap people our methods need not be to uh, you know you do something and then you have a hidden agenda okay i'm going to do this and then then they will you know get to hear the gospel um, they, there's no hidden agenda. It was very, very open, and it was with demonstration of the spirit and with power. Okay, so, um, so he did not rely on his, you know, on his charisma or his human personality. Like we see, he said, "I was with you in trembling. I was with you in weakness. I was with you in fear, and I, I ministered." Right. So, so, uh, you know, the, the, the in your notes, you know, there is this saying, right? What you draw them with is what you draw them to, meaning the method that you use or uh, the things that you use in order to draw, right? And the very things is what you draw them to, actually, right? So we don't want to, you know, use any, we should not you know, use any entertainment or anything to draw people because you're actually drawing them to that entertainment. You're drawing them to that very thing that you're using, okay? Uh, if it is some kind of a human philosophy, you're actually drawing them to that and not to Christ and him crucified, okay? So so that is something that we see. Okay, any, any doubts, any questions here? And we can uh, look at, before we look at verses six onwards. Okay. Okay, let's look at, uh, let's read verse 6 onwards. Okay, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age who are coming to, uh, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 
but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of God okay so uh, look at verse 6 so he's saying you know but however we speak wisdom okay till now he said you know it was not with uh, you know wisdom of man it was not with all these things that we came and preached okay but we, we came to i just wanted i decided not to know anything not to know uh, i mean not to present anything to you except the power of god right except the power of christ uh, and him crucified so here he says however, however we speak wisdom we do speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age so it is not the human wisdom it is not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age like people who are uh who are in some kind of a uh a, a, a leadership or ruler maybe you know people who are uh chiefs and rulers and kind of wisdom that they use earthly wisdom now we know that this kind of wisdom cannot draw us to god so we do not we do not use that wisdom at all right because that wisdom is actually coming to nothing it cannot help us to know god in chapter 1 you know paul paul writes that uh, he says um, um, uh, um, you know uh, about that kind of uh, wisdom that uh, uh, so, i'm sorry uh, i'm just trying to find that verse um yeah so uh, yeah in the uh, in verse 18 and and so on in verse 17 so the wisdom of words and he's saying i'm not drawing you to that wisdom uh, we we speak the wisdom of god and uh, we speak um, uh, in a, it's it's in a mystery which means that things that are hidden but these are to be revealed hidden to be revealed um and uh, which was actually hidden for or for a long time right the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the ages for our glory which means that these this message of the gospel it at this time it is revealed okay the message of the cross and what jesus at this time it is revealed it's a mystery that was concealed which people did not know the people before the cross as yes, they knew a little bit of it they prophesied about it but they did not see it right and even during the earthly ministry um they they did not know it but now it has been revealed this mystery has been revealed for our glory and uh, it says that uh, uh, we we speak this wisdom we communicate this wisdom of god this message and it's the in a mystery the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the ages for uh, for our glory verse 8 there's none of the rulers knew about this okay all those who um, who were there they did not know about this and uh, they did not engage in this because if they had known they would not have crucified the lord they did not know about this and uh, in verse 9 it says i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him now oh, an amazing verse is um, uh is quoting is uh, not quoting but actually uh, is paraphrasing uh, from isaiah 64 right? he's saying i has not seen ear has not heard which means that you know uh, for a human being how do we receive information through our eyes through what we hear right? through what we touch and feel right uh, physically we we look at the world around and then we we engage with the world with our physical senses now uh, the lord is saying uh, uh, you know uh, Paul is referencing to Isaiah 64 and he's saying, I has not seen, ears not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared. And then he goes on to say, but God has revealed them to us. Okay, so it comes by revelation, not through physical means or even through human wisdom, but it comes by revelation. How? The, uh, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. He says, "Those this this whole message and this mystery of the kingdom of God, uh, this mystery which is hidden to be revealed in this age, which was not revealed, which was concealed in all those ages, which was prepared before. Now this God has revealed them to us. 
okay so it comes by revelation of god how through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god so he's saying through the work the ministry of the holy spirit we receive it it's not by what i see what i hear but through the ministry there is the revelation okay so we understand this that god has these god reveals these things which are hidden god reveals these mysteries to us and it comes by revelation and uh, it's not by what we you know we, we may not have, we, we don't receive it by what we see is a natural we don't receive it in natural means but by spiritual means by the revelation god unveils this discloses these things by his spirit okay and the holy spirit knows all things the deep things of god the holy spirit is god he has infinite knowledge and understanding and wisdom and he reveals to us right and he goes on to say right in 1 corinthians 14 he will talking about the gifts of the spirit again paul writes and he says no no he prays in a spirit prays uh, he who prays in tongues speaks the mysteries of god he speaks edification um he is personally edified and he who prays in tongues he uh, he says he in the spirit he speaks mysteries okay, so those mysteries of god the things that are hidden we speak you know to our spirit or these are revealed to our spirit as we pray in tongues by the holy spirit right so um so this is what we see that uh, we this is how we receive this is one how one receives the revelation okay and uh, why is he saying all this he is actually referring to the fact that this is how we minister okay we did not minister with human wisdom we did not minister with words uh, persuasive words Uh, and words that were meant to entertain words that were meant to um you know just to make you feel good words that were meant to trap you or ensnare you right these are not the words that we use we use the wisdom of god uh, we did speak wisdom but we spoke the wisdom of god because this is how god reveals these things you know uh, and it is by the spirit of god that god reveals these things and therefore we we uh, we sh- we um, came and ministered in the demonstration of the spirit right in the demonstration of the power of god okay so what man knows verse 11 what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god okay so he's saying okay here's another thing this revelation this mystery you know uh, this is revealed to us by the spirit and no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god he knows all things he reveals all things and he says guess what you and i we have received this spirit we have not received the spirit of the world okay uh it's a wrong kind of spirit it's a wrong wisdom it's the wrong spirit which leads to carnality but we have received this holy spirit we have received him who is who has been sent from god you no know? uh, the spirit who is from god that we might know what is the objective right what is the reason the lord himself said no the lord jesus um when we read um, uh, john chapter 14 15 16 when he's talking about the holy spirit you know i go to the father that i might send him the comforter that he might come and lead you into all truth he will lead you into all truth he will teach you he will uh, i mean sorry he will guide you into all truth he will teach you he will remind you of the things that i spoke to you and so on so he has come to show us that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god right so as believers of the lord jesus we have you know we have as people who are one spirit in one spirit with him we have received many things from him 
and we have been born again we have received the gift of uh, salvation we have received justification we have received uh, you know we have access to the wisdom we have all these things access to the wisdom of god and the holy spirit he has been given to us so that we might know these things that have been freely given to us that have been given to us by the grace of god so he reveals these things to us okay let's look at verse 13 it says so these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual okay so we speak this we teach this we communicate this not in words which man's wisdom teaches not in the words of philosophy not in the words of you know a natural man but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual okay so uh, we have not only do we have the access to the wisdom of god but the, not only you know do we have the holy spirit uh, teaching us revealing us showing us the things that we have received freely from god but when we teach we teach in the manner which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual so he teaches us the spiritual things he Uh, how does he teach us he shows us um, things in the word he quickens the word to us things that were you know that were maybe previously hidden to us he reveals them to us he compares spiritual things with spiritual things uh, with the spiritual and we have we receive that and we teach that right verse 14 says the natural man does not receive the spirit uh, spirit uh, things of the spirit of god because they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so natural man you know, it could refer to a man who is you know, depending only on his natural senses okay saying only if i touch feel only if i see only if i you know uh, understand or uh, only if it makes logical sense only if it's scientific enough then i will i will prove it or i will receive it okay in in this it can refer to a man who is just depending only on the natural senses okay it can also mean a man who is not born again right the natural man one he says here they are foolishness to him it does not make sense so it's like it's illogical it's foolishness nor can he know them in a sense see first of all he does not receive it because he he thinks it's foolishness then the second second part of it he says no can he know them he does not have the ability to know them because these are spiritually discerned his spirit is unable to receive this right so um so that's 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 uh, that's what he says in verse 14 uh these th- these truths these deep truths they are received spiritually discerned spiritually the holy spirit teaches to our spirit but now this person is not you know his spirit is not born again first of all and uh, he does not you know for him it does not make sense at all okay now uh the other thing that we need to understand is that uh, okay let me just uh the other thing that we also uh, need to understand is that that uh, um that god has given us the mind god has given us the ability to think to reason to imagine right to uh, he's given us our natural abilities so there's nothing wrong in using our natural ability okay? because many times we we completely cut that off right but it comes under the leadership of the holy spirit right it comes under the wisdom it's it is submitted to the wisdom of the holy spirit it is submitted to the leadership of the holy spirit and our mind is renewed to the thoughts of god or the words of god our mind is submitted right so that takes the words of god the thoughts of god take precedence over what our fleshly mind can actually come up with or imagine or you know reason so our reason our power of reasoning 
our mental faculty, everything comes under submission to the leading and of the Holy Spirit, okay? and under submission to the um, leadership or the authority of the Word of God, right? So, um, so we need to understand it and uh, you know apply the truth in the right way. So we can't say that I cannot use our mind. I will not use my mind, right? If my mind is renewed to the Word of God, then there's you know it's very powerful, right? If my thinking is renewed. If I'm thinking the thoughts of God, then my mind is very powerful. I'm able to decide uh, as God would. I would do things because my mind is very important. It enables me to do those things. It enables me to make choices, righteous choices or unrighteous choices, wise choices or foolish choices. Right. So mind is very important. So we should not do away with the mind, but the mind needs to be in submission or renewed to the word of God. Okay, so here he says, uh, you know, this is how they are. They are the, for the natural man. However, it doesn't make sense because his mind is not submitted. Right, his he is ruled by his senses. Okay, verse fifteen. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So the spiritual man, or one who engages with the Holy Spirit, uh, one who one in whom the Holy Spirit dwells, and one who is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now he is able to examine and judge and discern by depending on the spirit. Okay, so that's why he says the spiritual judges all things. Okay, what does judge mean? Judge mean I judge means that I consider and I come to a conclusion. I I come to a decision. Okay, this is right. This is wrong. That is judging. Right. So judging, um, of course, you know we have this understanding that it's it's condemning. It's not just that. It's to judge. It's to come to the place of deciding what is right and wrong. So uh, a spiritual man judges. Uh, one who is spiritual, one who is empowered by the Spirit, one who engages with the Holy Spirit, one, who, one in whom the Holy Spirit dwells, he judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, meaning by a natural man, by a carnal person, he is not. he cannot be rightly judged, discerned. Okay. So the spiritual man's life, lifestyle, choices cannot be rightly judged by a person you know who is not, who's not actually led by the Spirit. Okay, verse sixteen. For who has known the mind of the Lord that He may instruct him? He's again referring to Isaiah forty. But we have the mind of Christ. Okay? Who knows God? Who knows His ways? Right? The natural man will not know. A carnal man will not know. Who knows? No, I have. I'm finite. Even as a believer, I'm finite. I do not know everything. Who has known the mind of Christ? But he says, but we have the mind of Christ. We who have submitted to God, to the authority of God, we who have submitted to the teaching and the leading of the Holy Spirit to receive that revelation from the Holy Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. Okay, so that's something that we need to uh, uh, we, uh, we need to renew our minds to. This this is the truth. To say that you know I cannot understand. Yes, you know, but we come to God and we say, Lord, I submit to you, to your teaching, to your leading, for I have the mind of Christ. So we, we have the mind of Christ in order to, uh, in other words, it, it means that I have access to the wisdom, the way God thinks, the wisdom of God. I have access to it. right? But why? Because I'm spiritually one with Christ. Right? The Holy Spirit dwells in me. I'm united uh, with Christ spiritually. So I have the mind of Christ. I have access to the mind of Christ. Okay, so it's um, it's wonderful to know that you know we have so much uh, in Christ. Okay, so Paul talks about all this, um, and he starts by saying in chapter two, this is how we minister, and so that you will know your dependency will not be in the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man, earthly wisdom of man. You should not be dependent on that. You should not be, you know, be in awe of that. But in the power of God, right? Because so that you might depend on the power of God. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here and take a quick break and come back. And we'll continue.